Only a spiritual person, a very spiritual person. A spiritual person. Only a spiritual, spiritual, very, very spiritual person. And, and, why? Because heaven is purely, purely, pure, purely spiritual, spiritual. Not so you must make every effort to be spiritual, to be spiritual, to become a very, very spiritual person as much as you can. Amen. 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 There is no problem. There is only one way to become a spiritual person. There's only one way. What is that? What is that? Okay. Actually, there are two ways, two ways to make you, to make you spiritual. To make you spiritual. One is the Holy Spirit. One is the Holy Spirit. And think about the Roman Catholic Church. When I was in the Roman Catholic Church a long, long time ago, many Catholics, numerous Catholics, actually received the Holy Spirit. But it was almost, it was almost even though they have received the Holy Spirit, they did not know the Bible. Okay? So they commit, they commit the, commit the sins which cannot be forgiven. So they committed, they committed Sins which are not which, which cannot be forgiven eternally. So it was almost it was almost useless for the humor. How about you? Maybe almost all of you. All of you have received the Holy Spirit. Your problem is that you do not know the Bible. You do not know the Bible. You know, Chula said, what, what will happen to you if you do not know the Bible? If you do not know the Bible? Even if you, if you even do not read the Bible, what will happen to you? What will happen to you? I am very sorry, but I have to say to you, I hate to say, I hate to say this to you, but maybe I have to say it to you. Because the Holy Spirit, boy, it is me. He's urging me to tell you. He's urging me to tell you. If you do not read the Bible, if you do not read the Bible, what will happen to you? I feel pastors and bishops, if you do not read the Bible, what will happen to you? You must know it very clearly. Very clearly. Maybe almost all of you do not want to hear about this. You must claim what will happen to you. Because nobody, nobody, nobody uh, does, nobody teach you. Nobody teach you. Nobody has taught you what will happen to you if you do not read the Bible. I hate to say this to you.
you, but maybe I have to say to you because of the Holy Spirit who is in me. Because he is urging me to tell you. Whether you are a great bishop or a great pastor, they will a lay person, all of you, if you do not read the Bible, do not read the Bible, you will be caused into trouble. Okay? That's why you must be talked about. I do not say it would be better for you to read the Bible, but I say to you, say to you, in the name of Jesus, you must. You must be. Amen. Amen. There, is, there is no way to be blessed. To be blessed. There is no way to be blessed. Without reading the Bible, you cannot be blessed at all. But in this case also, do not just read the Bible. Do not just read the Bible. At the same time, or after reading the Bible, what you must do? What you must do? Yeah? Obey, 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 obey. Wow, you are the best. How do you know that? You must obey, okay? You must obey, you must obey. If you do not obey, if you do not obey, you will be caused. You will be caused. It's not nice like saying, it's what the Bible says. Therefore, therefore, everyone, everyone, who hears these words of mine and puts them in practice is like a wise man, a lie is like a wise man who built his house, who built his house. On the rock, on the rock. Who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the steam rose, and the wind blew against the town. And it did not fall. Because it had its foundation on the earth. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not, does not put them in practice the life of a foolish man, a foolish man who built his house, who built his house on sand, on sand. So, the rain, the rain came down, the steam rose, and the, and the wind blew against the house. And it fell, it fell with great, with, with great crash. Because it, it had because he built his house on sand. It's not my sand. It's what our Lord and Savior Jesus has said to you. Let's look up the book of Matthew chapter 7. My dear bishops, special bishops, even pastors, you must you must memorize. You must memorize. These five verses. And you must be reminded of these five verses many times, as many as possible. And you must make every effort to put it to practice. Chapter Matthew, chapter 7. Verses 24 through 27. Therefore, everyone, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them in practice, you like a wise man, you like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the steam rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house. Yet, it did not fall because it had, it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice, they like a foolish man. Foolish man. There are few words, foolish Christians. 
who, who heal the body of Jesus, but do not do practice. But everyone who heals these words of mine and doesn't put them into practice like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the steam rose, and the wind blew and beat against the town, and it fell, and it fell with a great flesh. Amen. You must read the Bible. You must read the Bible. And you must obey the Bible. If, if not, you can be lazily powerless. Now, God can deal to you, can deal to you passion. But if you do, do not do not return to the Bible, if you do not read the Bible and obey the Bible, you will be caused and fall. The Bible says, anyone who does not love the Lord will be caused. This is really amazing and terrible. Anyone, anyone who doesn't know Jesus will be called. This is not my say. This is what the Bible says. If you do not read the Bible, if you do not read the Bible, how can you know, how can you know God? How can you know the Son of God? How can you know the Son of God? It is impossible. It is impossible. Without reading the Bible, Without reading the Bible, to know Jesus is impossible. Without reading the Bible, to love the Lord, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is impossible. Okay? Am I right? Yeah. That's why you must death him to absolutely return the Bible. And by returning, by returning to the Bible, I mean you yourself, you yourself must read the Bible. You yourself must read the Bible. Amen. And put in practice. Amen. Let's look up the book of the first Corinthians. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 16. Chapter 16. Oh, say two. Now you can make sure. You can make sure. First Chapter 16, chapter 16, verse 22. Chapter 16, verse 22. If anyone, here, if anyone, whoever, if anyone does not love the Lord, a cause will be on him. Okay? Uh, he not like you. It is what I am saying. If anyone does not love the Lord, Jesus Christ, a cause, for him. If you do not read the Bible, how can you know the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? It is impossible. Amen. If you do not read the Bible, how can you know Jesus? How can you obey, obey the word of God? It is impossible. If you do not obey the word of God, it is impossible for you to be blessed. Amen. Nowadays, nowadays, all the Christians, all the Christians, and even all unbelievers really want to be blessed. Okay? Do you want to be blessed? Yes. About the about the That's why they always say, whenever they greet each other, God bless you, God bless you. Okay? God bless you, God bless you. But God can never bless them. Why? Why? If you do not read the Bible, and if you do not obey the Bible, there is no way for you to be blessed. Amen. That is all simple and clear enough. If you really want to be blessed, we talk to Bible and obey the Bible, you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. Okay. From this time on, even from this time on, you can be blessed. You can be blessed. Amen. You can be blessed materially, materially. I know you love, you love so much money. 
I know and you know and God knows. Okay, you can be blessed, blessed, prosperous, materially, okay? even from this type of I from lie to you is what the Bible says. From this time on, right now, right after this time on, you you can be blessed. You can be blessed even materially. It's up to you. It's up to you. Just obey, just obey. Just obey, you can be blessed even materially. Materially. I don't like the the gospel, the gospel of prosperity, the so-called prosperity, prosperity gospel. I don't, I don't like it. But it is true. If you if you obey, if you obey, you also you can be material, material blessed. Even material blessed. It's very simple and clear now. Let's look at the book of Ephesians, 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 chapter 6, chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 1 through 3, 3, here is your home. I know you love money too much. And God is saying to you, children, obey your parents. Obey your parents. Okay? In the law. In the law. That means according to the word of God. According to the will of God. Obey your parents. Obey your parents. But this is right. Verse 2. Honor your father and mother. Honor your father and mother. Teach in the first commandment. In the promise. In the promise. God gave you a promise. This is the fourth commandment. The, the fifth commandment. That, he, that it may go well with you. It may go well with you. All things, all things, all things can go well with you. And that you may, you may enjoy, you may enjoy long life. You may enjoy long life. Wow. You can enjoy long life. Amen. Amen. No, you can enjoy a long life, a long life. Congratulations. You can enjoy a long life, a long life. Amen. It's very simple enough. If you obey, if you obey the, the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, if you obey, if you obey the law, the law of Moses, the law of Moses, that means the word of God, the word of God spoken, spoken or proclaimed, proclaimed in the time of the Old Testament, in the time of the Old Testament. If you obey the law of Moses, the law of Moses. That means the word, the word spoken or proclaimed in the time of the Old Testament. The law, the law of Moses. The law of Moses is represented, represented by the Ten Commandments. The law, the law. Now the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments is representing, the Ten Commandments is representing the Law of Moses. Especially, especially, if you obey the Ten Commandments, if you obey the Ten Commandments, because the Ten Commandments, commandments are representing the whole Law of Moses, so if you obey the Ten Commandments, commandments, especially, especially, yeah. the fifth, especially the fifth commandment, the fifth commandment, honor your father, honor 
other one and we will be blessed. If you obey, obey the Ten Commandments, you will be blessed. You will be blessed even you can enjoy a long life. But the point is, the point is, the crucial point is once again, Colossians of Ephesians chapter 6, chapter 6, verses 2 and 3, 2 and 3, to honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment, first commandment with a promise, with a promise. The fifth commandment is the first commandment with a promise. The promise of blessing. That is, that, that it may go well with you. All things may go well with you. And that you may, that you may enjoy long life. Only us, the point is, only us, only us. You can be prosperous if you obey the Ten Commandments, even the Fifth Commandment. You can be prosperous. You can be prosperous. Prosperous on the earth. That means you can be prosperous materially. Material. Just like the owner, the owner of Samsung Company, the owner of Apple Company, the owner of Google Company, the owner of Facebook Company. They are so much prosperous. They are so much prosperous. On the earth. Okay? They are so much prosperous. They are so much prosperous materially. Materially. They can even enjoy a long life. But after the physical death, after the physical death, they will go to hell. They will go to hell. They will be punished eternally in a fire. In the fire. Okay? And then you may enjoy long life on the earth. You can be prosperous on the earth. You can be prosperous materially. But after all, after your physical death, you can go there. You can be, you can be thrown in the lake of eternal fire. You, you can be punished eternally. Amen. 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 It's really true. It's really true. That's why Jesus said. That's why Jesus said. And if you obey, if you obey this command, if this Jesus command, you can be, you can be eternally, eternally prosperous. Not just on the earth. It's up to you. It's up to you. But as we can see, almost all Christians, almost all Christians have faith. Have faith. Almost all Christians in the whole world have faith at this point. Jesus said, maybe almost all Filipinos have also faith. About this commandment. Jesus commands you very strongly. Don't worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. Say to yourself, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Rather, seek, seek for, seek for, seek for, seek for his kingdom, his kingdom. His kingdom and his righteousness. Seek for his kingdom. Seek for his kingdom. How can you? How can you seek for his kingdom? How can you seek for? How can you? How can you have? How can you have? How can you secure? How can you make your own? How can you secure for the eternal kingdom of heaven? 
And how can you respect, how can you be God's righteousness? Not human righteousness. By faith. By faith. So this means, seek first means, seek first, seek first faith. Seek first faith. Seek first faith. By faith, you can secure, you can secure the eternal kingdom of God. The eternal kingdom of God. By faith, you can be God's righteousness. So seek first faith means seek first to to live by faith. To live by faith. Seek first to live by faith. In other words, seek first try to to be try to be prosperous. Try to be seek seek first to be. To be to be prosperous, to be prosperous, to be prosperous, to be prosperous, spiritual, 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 not material. If you obey, if you obey the ten commandments, you can prosperous. But yours, you can prosperous materially or on the earth. But at all, you can go ten. You can go ten. So you must force secure the eternal kingdom of God. You must, you must be, you, you, you must be blessed. You must be prosperous. You must be prosperous for spiritually, spiritually, for spiritually. You must be blessed for spiritually. Amen. Do you see my point? You must be blessed. For spiritual. spiritual. How can you be blessed spiritually? Of course. How can you be blessed spiritually? Spiritual. How can you be spiritually blessed? Spiritually blessed. How can you be blessed spiritually? If you obey, if you obey, once again, obey. If you obey, if you obey the word of God, spoken or proclaimed in the time of the New Testament. If you obey the word of God proclaimed in the time of the Old Testament, you will be blessed spiritually. You can be prosperous spiritually. What is it? The word of God spoken, proclaimed in the time of the New Testament. If you obey the word of God, Proclaim in the Bible, New Testament. That is, that is the word of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The word of Jesus. If you obey the word of Jesus, you will be blessed. You will be blessed. Spiritually, spiritually. You will be prosperous. Spiritually, spiritually. Amen. Amen. After that, if you obey, after that, if you obey the word of God, the Ten Commandments, you will be prosperous materially as well. Amen. Amen. But you, you must remember, you must be forced spiritually prosperous. Spiritually. You must obey, you must obey the word of God, the word of God, huh? spoken, proclaimed in the time of New Testament. You must obey the word of Jesus first. You must obey the word of Jesus. What is it? What it is called? The word of Jesus. The word of Jesus. What is it called? The word of Jesus. The word of Jesus. Baptism. Baptism. Oh my God. What is what is it called? What the word of Jesus? What is the word of Jesus called? The word of God. Okay. Right there. You can continue. Until you can find out the best, the best answer. The word of Jesus. What is it? What it is called? The word of Jesus. It's a common sense. 
Is it common sense? Answer me. <laughs> Scary. What is this? Oh, what is Jesus? What is it called? It's a common sense. Huh? Amen. The truth. Okay? The truth. It is called, right? The truth. The truth. Amen. Amen. If you obey the truth, the word of Jesus, the word of God proclaimed in the time of New Testament, you can be, you can be spiritually blessed. Spiritually. You will. Spiritually blessed. Spiritually blessed. If you are spiritually blessed, then you can, you can also obey, obey the word of God spoken, proclaimed in the time of the Old Testament. That means the law of Moses, especially Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. You can be also material blessed. You can be also materially blessed. But the order, which is the fourth, is a crucial point. Which is the fourth. You, you must be prosperous for spiritual. You must be blessed for spiritual. Amen. 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 But almost all of you have tried to be blessed for material. That's why you have not been you and not been blessed. and material evil. But from this time on, you must, you must make every effort to be blessed spiritually, to be prospered spiritually forth. And if you, uh, if you have been blessed spiritually, then you can obey also the Ten Commandments the law of Moses, if so, you can be also prosperous material. material. This is the very way for you to go. That's why the Bible says, Dear friend, dear friend, dear friend, my loving friend, I pray, I pray that you may, you may enjoy good health as a Christian, as a spiritual leader. You must have enjoy good, enjoy good health. Amen. If you are not happy, how can you, how can you do the work of God? If you, if you lie down on the bed, how can you, if you are hospi hospitalized, how can you do the work of God? You must, you must be very healthy, healthy, okay? You must be very, very healthy, amen. amen. And if possible, you must, you must have, you must enjoy a long life. Amen. This is up to you. Do not just say, but it's up to you. Obey, obey, obey. You must enjoy good health. I pray that you may enjoy good health. And all things, all things may go well with you. All things may go well with you. Amen. God really wants, God really wants all things. All, all things. God really wants all things to go well with you. But first of all, first of all, you also must be prosperous. So the Bible says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all things may go well with you, even, even, even as you are so. Okay? Even as you so, as you so, is getting a lot well. Okay? First of all, your soul must be prosperous. And then, and then, uh, you can enjoy good health. Even if you are 
have you get a kind of disease, you you can very easily get it better. If, if you are if your soul is prosperous, let's make sure in the book of the third child of the third child, third child, the book of third child. Third child chapter Third child only detail only one chapter. So third child first two first two. First two okay. You are very special. You know the, the book of the third child had only one chapter. Post two, post two. Dear friend, dear friend, I pray, I pray that you may enjoy, you may enjoy good health. Likewise, you must enjoy good health. And that all may go well with you. God dear you once, all things, all things to go well with you. But even, even, as your soul is getting better. But first of all, most of all, above all, your soul must be getting better. Your soul must be prosperous. Amen. Amen. Please look at me. Thank you. Thank you to me. As for me, as for me, my, my dear Bishop and Pastor, I was extremely poor. I was extremely poor. Maybe you cannot believe it, but it's, it is true. I'm not lying to you. I was extremely poor in my elementary school, in my middle school, in my high school, even in my college in the university. I was extremely poor. Until in my early thirties, I was Poor than any of you sitting here. Okay? Okay. What you must do? Yes. Uh, 
obedience. That is obedience. You are right. But you must teach it. What you must do first? To do, to do obey God, to do obey the word of God, you, what you must do first? Yeah? <laughs> to trust in God, what you must do first? Okay, congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, first of all, you must read the Bible. Okay? Without reading the Bible, you can never be blessed. Okay? You can never be blessed without without the Bible. I can promise you, eh? in my long and many, many experiences, uh, without reading the Bible, without reading the Bible, you can be over because without, without reading the Bible, you cannot be blessed at all. I can promise you. So, the most spiritual thing, the first thing, the first spiritual thing is reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. Make every effort to obey the, obey the Bible. Reading the Bible. You must read the Bible every day, every day, every day. Literally, every day. My dear loving Bishop, how many chapters do you read every day? Usually, usually. How many chapters? How many chapters usually do you read in a day? Thank you, speaking. Three chapters, three chapters. Okay. How many? Two chapters, two chapters. Okay. <laughs> Just one chapter. Ah, you are smart, huh? You seem to be very smart. But it's very hard for you to be blessed. Uh, only one chapter in a day is much better than nothing. <laughs> much, much better than nothing. It's, it's too, too small, too short. Uh, how many chapters in a day? Usually. Three? Two chapters. Two chapters. How many? Every day, 
after every day five chapter. I have read. I read every day five chapters and more than one more than one hour. I pray more than one hour. So in in other side I was so enthusiastic. I, I was so enthusiastic in the faith. I I used to be five chapters every day, every day. Okay? When I was a day person. When I was a day person, even in the Catholic Church. Nobody, nobody had forced me to read the Bible a lot, or three chapters or five chapters. Nobody forced me. No, nobody asked me to read the Bible. How many chapters? I have to read. But in any case, I made a strong decision. I started to read five chapters every day. But this is this is for a long time. Even though I read, I read five chapters every day, every day, but I was still very unhappy. Unhappy person. Unhappy. I was a very miserable person. Even though I prayed more than one hour, even two hours, sometimes three hours, but I was still a very unhappy, unhappy person. Very visionary person. So I wonder. So I I wonder why I am still a very miserable, unhappy person. And sometimes later, sometimes later, I increased, increased the chapters, the number of chapters. I should be every day. So ten chapters. In 15 chapters. 2000, 2018, when I went to the US, while I was sleeping deeply, early, very, very early in the morning, at 3 or 8, 4 a.m., maybe the whole speed has to be, and I came to the lab. Now, here he wants me to, to be into the mind. To be into the mind. God here wants me to be a true, a true expert in the Bible. Okay? A true expert in the Bible. God really wanted me to, to be, to be crazy. Crazy about the Bible, crazy about reading the Bible. Okay? You must also be crazy about Bible. As a true servant of God, if you are a pastor, you must be a true expert in the Bible. If you are a bishop, you must definitely, absolutely be a true expert, a true, a true expert in the Bible. You must be Pray about the Bible. You must be prayed about reading the Bible. Amen. From that time on, I increased, increased the number of reading the Bible. So, from that time on, I have read 20 chapters, 20 chapters from the Bible, 10 chapters from the Old Testament, 10, 10 chapters from the New Testament. With great speed, great speed. You must read the Bible with a good, great speed. Every day, my chapter is too slow, too slow. Every day, seven chapter, too slow. Ten chapter, study up. Fifteen chapters to read. Every day, fifteen chapter is not still enough. So in my long, many, many experiences, the best way I would read the Bible, more than ten, more than ten chapters from the Old Testament, more than ten chapters from the New Testament. 
in, with this speed, with this great speed, you can read the Old Testament, more than four times, the New Testament, more than twelve times. So, after ten years, ten years later, you can you can read more than more than forty times, more than forty times. Amen. What well, that? What time? Eh? Mind if I ask you, how old are you? Yeah? 51. 51. So, after, after 10 years, you can read the 40 time. 10 years later, you can 80. 80. Have the whole Bible. Whole Bible. Uh, 30 years later, when you, uh, you are 80, 80, 81, 110 times, no one can catch up with you. You can be the most anointed priest in the whole world. Congratulations. Okay? You can start from now on. About more than 20, 20, 10 chapters, 10 chapters. As for me, as for me, ten chapters from the New Testament, I usually read not in my own language, but mostly in English. Do you see my point? In your language, you can read very easily ten chapters. But if you read in English, it takes a little more time. In any case, it's up to you. From the Old Testament, 10 chapters. From the New Testament, 10 chapters. It's up to you. If you really love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's a piece of cake, a piece of cake. Amen. You know, a piece of cake. A piece of cake. It's a very easy thing. Very easy thing. Very easy thing. Because you love. Because you love the law. The law is in. And the people say, Where there is a way, there is. Where there is a way, there is. But where there is.
whenever you read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible, read great longing, read great longing for what? With great longing for what? With great longing for what? A voice. Okay. A voice. A voice. A voice. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the Bible, through the Bible, you can both hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why? Because the word of God, the word of God, the word of God is a written, is a written, written voice, written voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word of God, or the Bible, is the written voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Repeat that to me. The word of God, the written voice of the Holy Spirit. Okay, the word of God is the written voice of the Holy Spirit. The word of word of God, the written voice of the Holy Spirit. Israel to himself. 
For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. For uh, verse 6, verse 6, he said, he said to me again and again, through this one powerful book, it is too small a thing, it is too small a thing for you, for you to be my servant, to restore the tribe of Jacob, and bring back those of Israel. I have him. I also, I also made you, I will also made you alive, alive for the Gentile. I will also make you alive for the Gentile. Then you bring my salvation to the end of the world. Until in my, in my early 50s, uh, 56, 56, no, so, in my early 50s, until in my early 50s, so before I was, before I was, I was 53, 53 years old, I did not, I did not ever been to, ever been to other until in my early fifties, until I I became fifty three years old, I uh, did not I did not ever been to the nearest country, Japan. I stay. I live only in my the old country. I never, I have never been to any other country. But now, from this time on, until now, God has, God has made me to go, to go more than 50 countries. It is impossible for me. I, I cannot go any other country on my own, but you can see now a great miracle. But a pastor, a pastor of a small church, now I, I have become Asia, a small, a small servant of God to uh, travel all over the world, but it will be possible, it will be possible, it will be possible. My, uh, my fellow pastors told me, maybe you can, you can continue, you can continue only for two or three years. We have, we have traveled all 
one of the one is fifty by fifty six fifty six countries. Because God had called me. I will make uh, I will I will make I will make you I will also make you a light a light for the Gentiles. I also made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring my salvation to the end of the earth. Whether you can believe me or not, you can see a great miracle, a great miracle, which, which God Himself is fulfilling in me. Amen. Likewise, likewise, while you read the Bible, you can read the Bible. It's great longing, it's great longing for the calling, for the calling, for the calling. And the best expression is uh, read the Bible with great, with great longing, with great longing for the promise, for the promise, for the promises written in the Bible. All the promises written in the Bible are yours. Amen. Do you believe this? Amen. Do not just say amen, but you must believe. You must believe. If you can believe, what will happen to you? If you can believe, what will happen to you? For example, for example, maybe you cannot believe, but I can believe. For example, about this. God promised Abraham, Abraham, I will make you, I will make you into great nation. I will bless you. I bless you. God promised him. I will make you into a great nation. I will, I will bless you. I bless you. I will make your name. Listen, listen. I will make your name great. I will make your name great. Now you can believe it or not. Oh, yes. Okay. I can believe, firmly believe in this promise. I will make your name great. I have no, no greed for faith. I have no greed for faith, for faith. But because God has promised me, I want to you. I will make your name great. I will make your name great. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. You will be a blessing. That means you will be a source of blessing. A source of blessing. You will be a blessing. Blessing. Now, whether you can believe or not, maybe all the people, all the people around me, around me, including my my church members and including my holy pastor and bishop, they are all they are all being blessed because of me, through me, I firmly believe, and they also believe. Okay, we, we have. A holy pastor in European countries, he always said to me, We are Daniel C. We are blessed because of you. And our nation, this nation, and the other nation are greatly blessed because of you. He always said to me, I fall in God. I fall in God. Trust. Give it to you. Give it to me. I will, I will make, I will make, I will make your name great. I will make your name great. Amen. I will make your name great. Hey, you will be a blessing. You will be a blessing. I will bless. I will bless. Don't you bless you. Don't you bless you. And hey, whoever calls you, I will cause. And hey, all people, all people on us will be blessed to you. Oh, I want me to you. And this, this great, this great promises are being fulfilled in me. Amen. I'm not boasting about myself. I am explaining to you, if you can believe, if you can believe in the promises written in the Bible, what will happen to you? 
Give me your belly. If you believe in any, in any great promises written in the Bible, all the great promises written in the Bible are yours. That means, if you believe, if you believe, what will happen to you? You don't know. My dear bishops and pastors, Mark 11, 24. Mark. Mark, Mark. I have been reminded of this one powerful faith, faith secret Bible verse again and again since six or seven years ago. You must have, you must have. Whatever you ask for in prayer, God is saying to you, God is convincing you again and again. Whatever, whatever you you ask for in prayer. Believe, believe that you have received it. Everything. That's very, 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 very simple. And clear enough. If you believe, if you believe, it will be yours. Okay? If you believe, it will be yours. The problem is, you want to believe, but you cannot believe. Okay? This is your plan. But uh, if you are behind me of this, I know, by the Holy Spirit, you can start to do it. Whatever you ask for, ask for it in prayer. Believe, believe that you have received it. And in you. Believe and in you. Believe in the great promise given to Abraham. And in you. And they will be yours. Amen. Amen. So, my dear bishops and pastors, whenever you read the Bible, read the Bible with, with great longing, with great longing for the, for the voice of God, for the, for the voice of God, and for the calling of God, for the calling of God related to mission, related to your mission, you must, you must get the calling, get the calling, of the Almighty God. Huh? And whenever you read the Bible, read the Bible for, for, for with great longing for the promise, for the promise. With great longing for the promise, for the promise. For example, let me introduce to you what powerful Bible passage. Whenever you read this part of the Bible, we read this part with great longing, with great longing, with great longing for this passage to be fulfilled in you. Now, for example, Luke, Luke, chapter 4, chapter 4, verses, Luke chapter 4, Verses 18, verses 18 and 19, verses 18 and 19, verses 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because He has anointed me. My dear Jesus and Pastors, even though you have become a lady of Bishop, a great pastor, Actually, you must be, you must be anointed. Amen. You must be anointed by God. By God Himself. If not, if not, you are not set free. You are not set free from the burden, from the burden of preaching and teaching. Is difficult. It's difficult for you to preach and teach the gospel. Okay. But sometimes you can you can preach, preach and teach the gospel very well, very well. But sometimes I know you are thinking, you are worried about 
want to say what I want to say. Hey, after after Christian teaching the gospel very very successfully, sometimes they know you will start again to worry about. Now this time, what to say? What do I have to say? Or and how do I have to say? You you are not set free from preaching. But if you are anointed, if you are anointed by God, you said you can be you can be free. You can be free. You can be set free from from worrying about what to say or how to say. The spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me. Because He has anointed me. You must be chosen. You must be chosen by God as a preacher. You must be anointed by God as a preacher. Amen. To preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. As you know very well, Jesus said, Jesus declared, if you, if you remain, if you remain in my word, in my word, Jesus' word is a call to truth. If you remain, if you remain, he may, if he may, in my word, in my word, in Jesus' word, John chapter 8, verse 31, verse 2. If you may, in my word, you are really, you are really my disciples. That means, if you do not remain, if you do not remain in my word, you are not my disciples. Oh, yes, dear God. If you do not remain, in Jesus' word, you are not you are not his disciple. You can never enter the eternal kingdom of God. And you know, almost all pastors, almost all bishops, they do not make they do not make in Jesus' word. That means most of them, most of them, there's a big possibility. Most of them, them are not true bishops, are not true pastors. What does it mean? Demain, demain. If you be, if you be, if you do, if you demain in my words, in Jesus' words, in the truth, you are dearly my disciple. But if not, you are not my disciples at all. Huh? Then you will know. Then you will know the truth. Then you will know the truth, and the truth, and the truth will set you free, free, free. Okay, set you free from what? From what? From what? My dear bishops and pastors, you must be set free from all kinds of oppression, especially, especially from death. From death. You must have, you must have the true self. You must have eternal life, eternal life. You must be, that's why, uh, if you, if you have eternal life, if you have eternal life, you are dead free, if you are, or you are dead free from death, that means, even though you die, you can be forever, you can have eternal life, you can enjoy eternal life, but let's be, let's be realistic, let's be practical. You must be set free from, from, Especially from your poverty. 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 From your disease. Disease. Under the law, under the law of Moses, under the law of Moses, there were three, three punishments, three punishments. There were three punishments, punishments. Under the law of Moses, there were 
three punishment, three courses, three courses, three courses, three, three main courses. There are many courses, but these are the three courses. These are the three courses of death, penalty, disease. But now, because of Jesus, because of the grace of Jesus, we can be set free. We can be set free from these these causes, these causes, these punishments, these punishments. And it's up to you. How can you be set free from poverty, from this, from diseases? It's up to you. It's up to you. Okay? It's up to you. So how is it possible for you to be for you to be set free, set free from your terrible diseases, from your from your poverty, especially poverty, poverty. Poverty is also a kind of a kind of disease. As you know, when in this whole world there are numerous creatures, there are numerous poor creatures, poor, very poor creatures, including poor pastors, poor bishops, very, very poor pastors and very poor bishops. That's why they are always saying to themselves, I need money, I need money, I need money, I need money for my family, for my ministry, and I want to build a, a big church. I need money, I need money. They have been tamed, they have become already slaves of money. They are serving both God and money. How much? How much? You must be set free from your long, long poverty. And the Bible says, the second Corinthians, the second Corinthians, verse 8, chapter 8, verse 9, let's look up. So, look up the second Corinthians, second Corinthians. Chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though they know he was rich, though he was rich, the Son of God was so rich because he is the owner of all things, of all materials. Though he was rich, yet for your sake, for your sake, he became poor. For your sake, he became poor. So that you, so that you, through his poverty, through his poverty, through Jesus Christ's poverty, that so that you might become rich, you might become rich, you must become rich in a true sense. You must, you must be set free. You must be set free from poverty. And it's up to you. It's up to you. Why you cannot be set free? Set free. From your long, long poverty. Why are you? Why, why are you yet? Uh, why are you uh, yet not set free? Eh? Not set free eh? from the long, long poverty. It's up to you. It's up to you. How can you remain? How can you remain in Jesus' world? How can you live in Jesus' world? It's up to you. By obeying, okay? By obeying the truth, by obeying Jesus' world, you can remain in Jesus' world, in the truth. Then you can be the true disciple. Be a true disciple. Then you know, you will know the truth. How can you know the truth? This no, this no. When the Bible says, when the Bible says no or knowledge, it means, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean to just to know in head, but it means to know in your entire body, in your full body. That means, that means experience. 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 When the Bible says about knowledge, it means experience. Experience knowledge. Then you know the truth. How can you know the truth? How can you experience the truth? In this case also, by obeying the truth. By obeying the truth. Amen. 
I obey the truth, they will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And the truth will set you free. Okay? So you can be set free from poverty, from, from your terrible disease. How can you be set free from your poverty, long, long, from poverty, and from your terrible diseases? That's, that's, that's very simple enough. By, by the truth, by obeying the truth. Amen. By obeying the truth. By obeying the truth. Jesus was. By obeying the truth, you can be set free from your long poverty. By obeying the truth, you can be set free from your terrible diseases. Amen. Amen. It's up to you. Obey the truth. So, the more, the more you obey the truth, the more you obey the truth, the more set free. Amen. You can teach a priest. Very simple. The more, the more you obey. Obey the truth. Obey the truth. The truth means Jesus Lord. Jesus Lord. The more obey, the more you obey Jesus Lord, the more, the more you are set free. Amen. Okay? You can proclaim. You can preach and teach like this. But it's up to you. The more obey Jesus Lord, the truth. The more you are set free. Okay? Please repeat after me. The more you obey the truth, the more you are set free. Okay, so wonderful. So one more time. The more you obey the truth, the more you are set free. The more you obey the truth, the more you are set free. Okay, amazing. So one more time. The more you obey the truth, the more you are set free. The more you obey the truth. For example, if you are, uh, if you really want to be set free from your terrible disease, it's very simple. And this side, and this side, and this side will accompany those who believe. Those who believe. This side will accompany, will follow those who believe, those who true, those who truly believe. The first sign is this. In my name, in my name, they will drive out demons. Okay? They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hand. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not harm them at all. They will place their hands on sick people. And they will go. So, at least three, three gifts of the Holy Spirit. Three gifts to the power of the Holy Spirit you must have as a true, as a true believer. In my, in, in the name of Jesus, you must test out demons. Okay? You must test out demons. You must obey, obey. You must obey. So you must, you must test out demons every day in the name of Jesus. Only in the name of Jesus you can test out demons. And you can speak in new tongues. Whenever you, you speak, the more you speak in new tongues, the more powerful, the more spiritual you can become. Amen. So speak in new tongues as much as possible. And place your hand, place your hand on the sick part of your body. And on the, on the sick people. You must have, you must have at least the divine divine healing power. Amen. 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 The more you obey, the more you obey Jesus Lord, the more you are set free. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, let's take five minutes. And the last session.